Hey everyone's Jackal Wolf back in Feed the Beasts Stone Block 3 with another tutorial Let's Play video. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. Last episode, we added some storage to our chickens. We did that by completing the functional storage quest, as well as the pipes quest and the pipes upgrade quest. This episode, I thought that since we've started on the functional storage quest, this would be a good opportunity to kind of expand on that. We've got our storage controller. We've got our armory cabinet. We've got some upgrades, plus an extra tip from a viewer that's going to actually make this a little bit more efficient. But before we get started, now would be a great time to click on that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time I post a new video to my channel. Also, if you're enjoying this content and you want to support, click on the join button down below. Check out all the perks available for my community members, one of which is the supporter shout out. You might have seen these popping up in some of my previous videos. Alternately, you can check out my Patreon page. There's a link down below in the description. But enough about that. Let's get back to the video. So before we get started here, there is one resource that we're going to need to complete all of these quests, and that's going to be some access to some netherite. Now to get netherite in our world, we've got about three different options. We could go back out to the nether, find it manually, sort of like we would in the vanilla world, or we can create it through two different methods. One of which is going to be the hammer method where we take a bunch of netherrack, break it down into crushed netherrack, and then take that crushed netherrack and run it through some crushing wheels. So I'm going to go throw this up here. I think I've missed. Oh, there's another couple ones here. There we go. So if we take a look at the recipe for the crushed netherrack through the crushing wheel, one of the drops is debris scrap. Now this is a very, very small drop. It's a 3% chance. That's why I did a full stack of compressed netherrack. But we can take these debris scraps, run them through our melter, and get one nugget worth of molten uh, debris. Using that molten debris, we can then cast it into some netherite scraps. We can then take those netherite scraps and turn them into netherite ingots. Now, 3% is a very, very low percentage of chance, and this is a very, very slow process as well. So we're going to let this run in the background just to see how much we can get out of a full stack running it through the crushing wheel. The third method that we can use to get netherite is to make ourselves a netherite chicken. To make a netherite chicken, we're going to need a cobalt chicken and a gold chicken. Each of these are going to require multiple steps to get up to them. I've pre-done this one here right now. I didn't want to spend too much time working on the chickens. I've already done a breeding chicken episode, so I didn't feel that it was necessary. But to make the netherite, what we're going to do is we're going to take the cobalt chicken and the gold chicken, and they're going to go run them through a breeder. So hopefully we're going to get a netherite chicken fairly quick on this. I'm going to keep coming back and checking it, and then once we do, we're going to go throw them up there in our last little chicken spot, and then we're going to go get ourselves some netherite that way. So while those two methods are running in the background, what we're going to do now is we're going to go focus onto the storage quests. The first one is to make a storage controller. To make a storage controller, we are going to need four stone in a crafting table with two blocks of quartz, two functional storage drawers. It doesn't matter if they're the singles, the doubles, or the quads, and then one redstone comparator. Now to allow the storage controller to work, we're going to need to make ourselves a linking tool. To make a linking tool, it is five pieces of paper, two gold ingots, any of the storage drawers, any of the functional storage drawers, and then one diamond. So we're going to take these two items out. You can see we've completed the quest complete storage controller. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go place this in our world. Now, if you're familiar with the old storage drawers mod, this is a little bit different. With the storage drawers mod, you had to place the storage controller right up next to your storage drawers, and they had to all be touching to kind of connect them. With the functional storage mod, we don't actually have to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this here for the moment. To connect our functional drawers to this, what we're going to do is we're going to take our linking tool. We're going to right click on it. You can see controller configured to the tool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and right click on a storage drawer. Now these two storage drawers are now connected. I can go and add multiple ones or even better. What I can do is I can shift, click the air with the linking tool. And now we've swapped to multiple modes. So we've got two modes with the shift held down. One is the single mode, which is what we were using there. The other one is the multiple mode. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click a functional storage drawer. And then I'm just going to go drag this down our wall 
all the way over to the end. Now, here's a little bit of a trick or here's a little bit of something to keep in mind. I'm going to go right click to complete it. And you can see it's captured all of them except these last ones. That means that this storage controller only has a distance of 12 blocks. So to get all the way over to here, what we're going to have to do is break this. And then I'm actually just going to go place it right here. Now, because we moved the storage controller, it's lost its association with the drawers that we assigned to it. So we're going to have to do that again. So one more time, we're going to go click, drag this down all the way to the end. Keep in mind, you can actually come out as well. So depending on what your storage looks like, you could use the multiple select in a number of different ways, but we're going to go select that. All of these storage drawers are now connected. So what is the benefit of having a storage controller with this particular setup? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense because all of my roosts are automatically being piped into their respective storage drawers. But if I wanted to have my roosts on one side of the room and my storage drawers on another, what I could do is have all of the roosts pipe into the storage controller, which would automatically move the resources into their respective drawers rather than like I've got here with all of the pipes coming out of the roosts and going into the respective drawers that way. So as an example, let's go and grab a bunch of these lava eggs from our lava chicken. And then, so we've got 305. I'm going to go right click once we got 369. I'm going to go double right click. It takes everything out of my inventory that will feed into here. And we're now back up to the 626. And there you go. So we are lucky. We do have ourselves that netherite chicken. That's perfect. Let's take these guys out and we're going to go throw him up here so we can start making ourselves some of the netherite nuggets. So while he's making nuggets, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a upgrade for these functional storage drawers. Now there's a couple of different upgrades here. The one I want to look at first is going to be this polar upgrade. Now this was a hint given to me by a 727 that suggested that the polar upgrade might actually work a little bit better than using the functional pipes. Because what it does is if we apply it to a storage drawer, it will pull resources from a particular direction into that storage drawer. Now there is also a pusher option, which does the opposite. It's going to take items from that functional storage drawer and push them into an adjacent block, depending on the direction that you select. So I'm just going to make the polar version of it. The pusher is the exact same recipe, just flipped. So to make a polar upgrade, it is six blocks of stone, one hopper, one drawer, doesn't matter which type, and then one piece of redstone dust. And then what we're going to do is... Let's do it on our coal chicken. We're still producing some coal. It's not maxed out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go break these pipes. We can now come out here and we can apply this polar upgrade to our functional storage drawer. The first thing we've got to do though is tell it which direction to pull from. So if I hover over it in our inventory, you can see it is a direction of down. So that means it's going to try to pull items from below it. We don't want that. This chicken is producing eggs. They're not going to go into the storage drawer with coal. We want to pull this from the top. So again, I'm going to go open up my inventory. We're going to hover over the upgrade. And then if I right click here, you can see the direction goes changes to up. That's the one that we want, but we could also pick north, south, west, east. Down was where we started and then back up is the one that we actually want. So basically we can have it pull from any direction around this block. Now to add the upgrade to the storage drawer, I've got two options. I can right click on the frame, which brings up a little bit of a GUI. I can then take that upgrade, put it into the utility section, and it is now pulling items from our roost up top. You can see it just pulled that coal down. No pipes are doing it. It's just a utility card that's doing it for us. Now the other method of doing it is I could actually take this upgrade and then just click on the functional storage drawer and it automatically gets applied. So that is how the polar or the pusher upgrade works. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the size upgrade. So we've got four size upgrades available. We've got the copper upgrade, which multiplies the storage by eight. We've got the gold upgrade that multiplies the storage by 16. And then we got the diamond upgrade that multiplies the block storage by 24. And then finally, we got the netherite upgrade, which multiplies the block storage by 32. So what I mean by that is 
each of these blocks, and here's one here, our redstone chicken is currently maxed out. It's got a maximum storage amount of 2,000. If we add a level one, if we add the copper storage upgrade to it, that's going to multiply by eight. And we're going to get 16,000. After that, it'd be 32,000. And then it goes up and up to that maximum one. So to make a copper upgrade, we're going to need four copper ingots, two blocks of copper, two chests, and then a oak drawer. Now I'm going to make four of these because we're going to require one for each of the additional upgrades. And I want one to actually show how it works. So that gets us our copper upgrade. And I just realized I did not make enough functional storage drawers there. So we're going to need three more functional storage drawers to get the rest of those copper upgrades. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take one of these upgrades. We're going to apply it to one of our functional drawers. Let's do it with the wood one. So with an open hand, I'm going to right click on the frame. We're going to take one of the copper upgrades and we're going to put it into the storage section of this GUI. And you can see it automatically starts filling up with some extra wood there. We've now gone from 2000 items to 16,000 items. Now it is possible to put multiples of these in at the same time. So we've now ad added an additional storage upgrade. We're now up to 132 K, which is an absolute ton of extra storage, especially because these are two of the smallest amount. We can go add them both here. We're now 8.4 million just with four of the copper storage upgrades. But I'm just going to leave one in there for now. What we're going to do is we're going to take these copper upgrades. We're going to come back over here and we're going to upgrade these to a gold upgrade. So to make a gold upgrade, it is three gold ingots, three blocks of gold, two chests, and then one of those copper upgrades. We're going to make all three of those. And then we're going to come over. Let's do this on the quartz one. I'm trying to pick ones that I absolutely want a lot of. Like to me, there's no point in me increasing the amount of flint I have. I'm never going to need more than 2000 flint. Same thing with a lot of the dyes. It's very rare that I'm going to need that much. But something like quartz here, you know, there's a good chance that I might want a lot of that in the future. So we're going to open that one up 2000. We're going to take one of these upgrades. We're now up to 32,000 storage. So what we're going to do to continue is we're going to take a, another one of these gold upgrades. We're going to come over to our crafting station. We're going to put these into it to make a diamond upgrade. It is four diamonds, two blocks of diamonds two chests and then those gold upgrades we're going to take those out and again we're going to go apply this one let's apply this one to our redstone so one of those diamond upgrades automatically gets us up to almost 50,000 items so as a final demonstration we're now going to make the netherite upgrade to do that we're going to need a netherite ingot so we've made our netherite chicken here we've got 51 of these netherite nuggets that should be more than enough for what we need so let's go and there we go so nine netherite nuggets gets us the one netherite ingot as a demonstration let's just take a look it looks like our gravel is still pounding out here we've got nine we've got nine debris scraps we've got just enough to make one netherite scrap to make a netherite ingot, we would actually need four of these and four gold. So going the chicken route is a little bit more time consuming when it comes to making that chicken. I managed to get all of the previous chickens that we needed in maybe about 30, 40 minutes. It depends on how often that you're checking your chickens. And then we saw that we actually got the netherite chicken fairly quick after that. So this is probably your best method of making netherite in stone block three. Now to apply the netherite to the upgrade, what we're going to need is to make ourselves a smithing table. This is just a vanilla recipe. It is four planks in a crafting table with two iron ingots. We're going to take that out and let's just place that right here. We're going to go click on the smithing table. We're going to put the upgrade in it and then we're going to take the netherite scrap and we've now got ourselves a netherite storage upgrade. Increases the storage by 32. And you know what? Netherite. I think you deserve that. Let's go throw that guy up there. Just the one storage upgrade gets us the 65,000. If we added another one in there, it would be all the way up into the millions already. I can't even fathom what number that would be. And while we're at it, let's go put those guys back in there. Now there's one more upgrade that I want to take a look at, and that is a void upgrade. So in this particular case, it's not such a big deal because these resources are being produced in these roosts. 
once our storage drawer gets full up, the roofs will back up themselves and then the whole thing shuts down. But other automatic resources like our crushing, you know, wheels here, if we set up an automatic thing using our, you know, cobblestone generator feeding, you know, cobblestone or crushed cobblestone into there, it's going to be constantly producing items. If our storage ever backs up, it's going to start producing those items in the world. So rather than have items just suddenly floating around in our world, you know, causing lag issues, what we could do is we can set up a storage system using the functional storage drawers and then adding something in called a void upgrade. What the void upgrade does is any extra items of that type that tries to get pushed into the blocks just gets deleted. So there's no chance of it actually backing up. So to make a void upgrade, we're first going to need some obsidian. Now I haven't made obsidian yet in our world, but we're going to need to have some lava and we're going to need to have some water. And I could actually do this manually by, you know, creating a pool in my world, filling that pool with lava and then covering it all over with water. That's certainly a legitimate method of doing it. We've got a pick that can pick obsidian. But that's a very vanilla solution. This is modded Minecraft. What we want to look at is some modded solutions for that problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our smell tree and we're going to use this to make some obsidian for ourselves. So first off, we're going to need a little bit of water. I've got a bucket of water already. I've also got an infinite pool right here, but we're going to use our seared drain to add water to our, our smell tree. And then as far as the lava eggs go, it would be nice if I could actually just sort of toss them in here, have them melt down into lava. That's not going to work. I could place them in the world and then use the bucket to scoop them up. Or I can actually just open up our inventory, take a empty bucket, put an egg in it. We get our bucket of lava. So I've got one extra there. And then there we go. We've got three buckets of lava and then doing the same thing. We're going to go add them into our smell tree, add them into our smell tree. So two buckets of lava to one bucket of water gets us two blocks of obsidian. So that's perfect. That's what we want. What we're going to do is we're going to go start pouring that obsidian into our casting basin. There you go. We've got eight pieces of obsidian. Let's head back over to our crafting area. Now, if we take the eight pieces of obsidian surrounding a storage drawer, any storage drawer will work. That's going to get us our void upgrade. Like with the other upgrades, what we're going to do is let's just make a little bit of space there. We're going to go right click on the storage drawer along the frame. And then we're going to take the void upgrade and we're going to put it into the utility section. If we now look up here, you can see it's emptying out, but those eggs are going nowhere. They've actually been taken, thrown out into the ether, voided into whatever they're going to go, but they no longer exist in our world. So the void upgrade is great for getting rid of unwanted additional items. So last but not least is the armory. To make an armory, we're going to need one more netherite ingot. So nine of our nuggets into a crafting table gets us one netherite ingot. We're going to take that ingot, put it into a crafting table with four stone blocks, three of the functional storage drawers. Again, it doesn't matter which one. And then one redstone comparator that gets us our armory cabinet. Now, this is a little bit less useful, certainly with what we've got right now. What an armory cabinet does is that it stores items that are not stackable. So tools, armor, any sort of block or machine that doesn't stack with others of its type. So what we're going to do is we're going to go place it into our world here. And that's actually where I'm going to leave it because I don't have any way of interacting with this armory cabinet. If we look at the quest... It says you cannot open it. It has no GUI. You can only insert an extract using automation. So I don't think I've got the automation available to actually pull and push anything into and out of it. So we're just going to leave it there. It was one of the quests we had to do, and it was sort of in range of all these other, you know, functional storage drawers. But that's going to be it for this one. Sorry for the long episode, but, you know, these functional storage drawers are very useful. There's a lot of different options for them. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions, but I'll see you guys next time. Good bye.